today we have a conversation at Heal and Speak with astrologer coach Sonia Francis and I am super super excited yes hi <laughs> Hi! Um, I'm glad we made it. <laughs> yes, me too. Yes. Wonderful. Um, welcome to, um, welcome at Healers Speak. And um, I'm you. super excited to have you with us today. Um, there are so many people um, watching you and reading you and being positively inspired by you. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So welcome at Healers Speak. And um, so for people who don't know and they're watching us from all around the world, is Healer Speak at the Guided Healing Astrologer Coach Sonia Francis. And you live in? I live in Pittsburgh, in Pittsburgh right now. Yes. Tell us a little bit yes. about you and your story and how you started, you know, being so interested and inspired by astrology. Yes, so I'm originally from Austria, from Vienna, from Europe, and uh, I've lived in the United States since 1994, so for quite a while, um, and I, I got uh, into astrology about 25 years ago uh, when I was reading a book um, by a German psychologist uh, who talked about Buddhism, actually, which was interesting, so that's also why I have the theme of Buddha always in the back of my videos. Um, and I'm not actually a Buddhist, but I, um, I love the serene, the serenity of, of Buddha and the, the image and the peacefulness uh, uh, around that. And, and also that book about Buddhism was the beginning of my journey with astrology, because in the book he was writing about as above, so below. Mm. And so anything that's out there in the world is reflected um, it's inside of us as well. So there's, it's, it's always a, a reflection of energies, you know, the internal universe and the external universe. And so I got very interested in, in, in that and, and I wanted to explore that further. So I bought a bunch of astrology books and I started reading them and I never stopped. Yeah. <laughs> it just basically became this huge passion of it mine. It does have that effect um, on some of us. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. I, I just want to say I love the expression as above so below is just uh, it was a huge inspiration for me on so many levels um sounds very mercurial you know like really yes. uh, magical um yes and i'm sure that the people that are watching us uh, you, you know want to know a little bit about what is happening in the sky right now you yes. know the exciting <laughs> news absolutely there's lots going on and i'm sure we're all feeling all these different energies like moving within us right now i mean one of the major things that is happening is that venus which is the planet of love and values and relationships and connected also to finances and how how much we value ourselves and life and other people um that's currently stationing, which means that the planet is starting to slow down. It's moving slower than normal. And so the energy is more exalted. There's things that are more in our face. It invites us to be really aware of what is in our face around values, relationships, finances. And um, uh, the planet is getting ready to go retrograde on October 5th. So um, you know, this retrograde phase is then an invitation to kind of go within and align ourselves with the Venus energy from the inside and get more connected to our values, you know, like are the external values that show up in our financial partnerships or intimate partnerships in alignment with what's going on internally, you know, because Venus is in Scorpio right now. So yes. that is all about <laughs> financial and intimate partnerships. It's about, um, you know, our values in terms of like, um, you know, how we connect to our sexuality, how we connect to past trauma, um, how we connect to empowerment. Do we feel empowered in our relationships, in our financial and intimate relationships? Do we feel disempowered? Has there been disempowerment in the past around that? So all of those things will be things that will come up during the station phase, but also will come up during the retrograde phase. We're getting a chance to realign ourselves uh, internally and externally, you know, to, to have that realignment and also reevaluate 
for ourselves? Like, is this something that works for us? Are we in a good place with this? Do we feel empowered? You know, and if there is something that doesn't feel empower, empowered or where we feel a little bit stickiness around that, then we need to take a look at that and, and work through these issues from the inside out, right? Right, yes. Um, I have the question, and by the way, yeah. hello, Jim, and hello, Kimberly. Thank you for joining us. And please ask questions. Yeah, yeah please ask questions. I had a question, I had many questions the last couple of days about the Venus retrograde because obviously she's the queen of the skies. And yes. so, you know, like it seems to me like all the planets are in one palm and then she's alone in, in another and, you know, she's having her time now, you know. So it yes. affects us all a lot. But, you know, I received yes. a question about what do we do when we feel stuck? Like with Venus, it's just like, there yes. is all this energy of past lovers or past situations coming back and then we right. feel a little stuck. What do we do when that happens? Well, one thing that's, uh, that's important to remember is while the planet is stationing, we are going to feel a little bit stuck because the energy is all about creating more awareness around the issues. So we need to wait until the planet is no longer stationing. So that will be after October 14th. Uh, Venus will already be retrograde at that point, but the planet will be at its regular speed uh, from October 14th on. And then we're getting a chance to really address the issue more, more front on and, and from the inside out because Venus will be retrograde at that point. So, um, so it's also important to remember that Pluto, which is the planet that rules Scorpio, which Venus is currently in, is also stationing right now. Um, and so we're having sort of like a double station happening at the same time, and but they're connected with each other because of the sign, because of Venus being in Scorpio. And we're like they're underwater. Connected. So, <laughs> yeah. so we're feeling the intensity of that, you know, because Pluto is, is about empowerment and, and where we feel empowered or disempowered. So um, we're feeling this very much in our face right now, but it will start to get a little bit less intense and will feel a little bit softer once Pluto has gone direct uh, after Sunday. Uh, um, um, so that's September 30th. After mm. September 30th, we, we're going to start to feel it a little bit less strong. And then, of course, after the station phases are over as well, we're going we're gonna to feel a little bit more like... Oh, okay. Now I can address this more front on. Right. right? I, and, and, and another question that is coming in. Hi, Nadia. Hi, Penny. Please post your Hi. questions. Um, what has been your experience with Venus retrogrades? Like um, events, uh, personal, or does it solely depend where Venus is in your chart? Right. That's a great, great question, actually. Yes, I mean, there are cer definitely certain general things about Venus retrograde we can talk about, but of course, each person will experience it slightly differently because of where it's showing up in their own birth chart. And also, depending on whether you have a strong Venus um, signature in your own birth chart. So if you're a Libra rising or sun sign, for example, then you're going to feel the Venus retrograde way stronger than other people and also that's the same is true for Taurus sun sign or rising sign uh, because Venus is the ruler of Taurus and Libra so if you have that that Libra Taurus signature in your chart that's very strong then the Venus retrograde will feel way stronger for you personally because that's your planet right that's your planet that that you live by um, so for, for me and you, for example, we will feel that quite strong. I started already. <laughs> since we both have the Libra rising sign, right? And I'm also a Taurus, so I feel it. I have a double whammy with, with anything connected to Venus. Um, but the Venus retrograde in general, I would say, is definitely a reevaluating of whatever area of life Venus is um, traveling through in your own birth chart. So depending on where it's showing up, whatever house it's showing up, that area of your life needs, you need to take a look at that area of your life and see like, do I feel empowered there? Do I feel that my relationships have um, 
reflect the value that I feel internally it, it needs to reflect? Like, is it a match? My in, inner experience and my outer experience, right? right. Um, and, and things like that, you know? So we return to us above, so below us, the inside is a reflection of the outside when we keep, yes. uh, because there, there is this magical quality when Venus is in our sign, you know, this flow, this gift, this magic, it's everything, it's glittery. And then when it's the opposite, we're like, oh, okay. It's, it's like, I don't want to, you know, I, I don't use the word detriment, but it's really a lesson, like a, like, like a deep yeah. lesson. Um, yeah. Great. So uh, Adrienne is saying incredible information. Hello, Maria. Um, and my other question, my next question would be, thank you, Adrian. Yes. I, I know that you are working with a lot of people and I know that you have a lot of programs and, um, it's beautiful because I mean, in our work, we go deep into people's lives, right? And, yeah. and this trust and this beauty, this collaboration. Um, how have you experienced people being healed or, or receiving healing from the, the art uh, and science of astrology? Well, there's many ways in which people really benefit from, from connecting with astrology. Um, and it's very important to approach it from a place of, uh, empowerment towards yourself and other people um, because when astrology is used in a in a way to to scare you or to um, make you feel um, anxious about life then it's usually not so helpful um, but it's but if it's used in a way where you get a chance to take a look at you know how are the energies and how can I align myself with as the energies currently are that's very helpful because it gives you a sense of understanding where you're at personally, where life is at, and and to really move with the flow, move with the energies rather than move against the energies. Okay. And so that really helps on a personal note. And, and, it, and it also helps with feeling a little bit more relaxed and feeling a little bit more like, oh, okay, that's what's going on. So I can just take a deep breath and, and let myself just kind of like flow with that and you you understand the time frame of things a little bit better too, right? Because you know when the station is beginning, you know when the station is ending, you know when the retrograde phase is beginning, when it's ending. So you have an understanding of the time frame of how this energy is going to, when it begins, when it ends. So it gives you a sense of, you know, maybe being able to use the timing of things a little bit better when you start certain things in life, you know, or you know, where to focus also, right? You know, when a Venus is retrograde, you know, you can really use that focus to really go within and get more in that place of reflection and in that place of reevaluation and use that time frame for what it's meant to be, you know, and that's empowering. You know, when you do that, you feel empowered and you, you're doing the work, you're doing your inner work, you're doing um, what's required energetically speaking in, in that time frame. And in that way, it's very, very helpful. And I think it's very healing to use it in that, in that way. If we use it, uh, if we use the tool, cause it's a tool, right? It's not, uh, it doesn't rule our lives. It's just a tool that we can use to align ourselves more with, uh, with ourselves and with the universe. Yes. Right? We receive this information of the chart of, yeah. of, how the cosmos was when we were born and, and also finding yes. our place in the world, finding our, our place in yes. the cosmos. And I, and I loved very much, I remember our conversation yesterday when you said that, you know, sometimes it's like we're used to this constantly doing and doing and doing. And yes. we, we feel somehow in a decade or less or lack of, if a universe or Venus or this, this mighty planets, because they're strong energies, say, you know, now it's time to stop. It's, it's yes. time to stand still. And, and, and the cycle of life says we're standing still now and just listening or, or waiting. And yes. a lot of people, we, we have problem with that because we feel like yes. it's not, we're not productive. You know, we're not yes, a... and allowing that balance between the masculine and the feminine is very important. And astrology can really give us 
an insight of what that balance is and, and when to be more in the feminine and when to be more in the masculine. And, and that can be hugely helpful because our conditioning is so strong in regards to the masculine, you know, like always going after things and accomplishing and doing and, you know, being proactive. But there is a time for that. And then there's a time for allowing and receiving mm. and leaning back and letting things come to you, you know? And Venus retrograde is certainly a time for more of that feminine energy to move through you and allow that to, to really penetrate you, you know? Allow that feminine energy to, to, to connect with you and, and to flow and feel and receive and enjoy and reconnect with, with the, the beauty of things and with the with that feminine vibration. Hello, Lisa Mudia, watching us from Greece and from Cyprus. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Um, and yes, that is a beautiful point. And also, I, I loved, because it brought it to my attention, um, the feminine and masculine aspect. Yeah. I haven't thought yeah. about it like that, that, you know, the planets are masculine and feminine, and, and it, it, it gives all of us as a collective the opportunity to learn. Yes. Like, how does it feel that I am feeling uncomfortable with Saturn? You know, or, or right. how does it feel that I'm feeling, you know, oh my God, Pluto, and, you know, everybody's scared, or Mercury, right. you know, <laughs> going retrograde and all that. Right. And as you said, it's a tool, it's nothing to be scared of, or, you know, being great. Yes. And to, to remember that these energies exist within us, right? They're not, I mean, we think when we talk about astrology, we think of the planets as something that's outside of us and that's, that's impacting us from the outside but it's actually just a representation. The planets are a representation of something that exists inside of us, an energy that's already there. So it's really about tapping into these energies, not just outside of ourselves, but inside of ourselves. And each retrograde phase gives us the opportunity to do that. So retrograde phases are very important phases because they help us to really tap into a, a like a part of ourselves that we maybe um, are used to tapping into in the outside world through, you know, love and relationships and financial connections with other people or within ourselves, what we value, you know, like we're used to tapping into that outside of ourselves, but the retrograde gives us this opportunity to really get connected internally. And to really feel how there is that inner universe. There is that energy inside of us. Yes. Directly. Yes. Right? The inner universe. Yes. And yes. the other question I received is if you have a general, you know, a little bit about the major astrological events that are coming our way. Uh, we know that Venus goes direct around November 16th. And yes. so just a little bit about, you know, what can be even worlds changing, the structures. Uh, well, there's, <laughs> that's a big question. It's, a big, it's, it's, it's very broad. <laughs> that's what I said. You know, so. It's a big question. I mean, there's obviously there's a lot that's changing uh, on a collective level and, and in terms of the, the world that we live in currently and that it has been happening, you know, consistently since, you know, the last probably the last five, six years, we've been very much in a very transformational place collectively because, you know, the outer planets have been changing signs quite consistently since 2011, right? And so when outer planets change signs, that means that there's something shifting on a, on a larger scale, not just on a personal level, but on a collective level and on a spiritual level. You know, and, you know, we've we've seen Neptune move into Pisces, which has happened in, in 2012. And that's been a big shift for us on a very spiritual level, like connecting more with our um, with our feeling body, with our intuitive body. You know, we've seen Uranus move into Aries in 2011 and Pluto move into Capricorn in 2008. You know, now Uranus has moved into Taurus. Um, so we're, we're definitely seeing big shifts, you know, collectively speaking. And 
we're we're being invited to collectively get more in touch with um you know shifting um our value system in terms of the political structures the economic structures you know with pluto in capricorn saturn has joined pluto in capricorn now as well so we're we're being invited to become more mature and self-reliant and more responsible mm. in our approach to how we approach in society like with our political and economic systems right like uh to not rely on uh leadership necessarily uh that's out there politically speaking but to rely on ourselves to say yes we are the voice we are the people and we are going to uh take responsibility for how we're moving in the world and how we're connecting with everything around us so it's about right? raising our consciousness is uh about... raising our consciousness continuously yes and and allowing our intuitive side to to guide us you know neptune is in pisces it's in its own sign yes saturn is in capricorn it's in its own sign so both of these planets have a strong weight right now that invites us to really uh tap into our intuitiveness into our feeling body to tap into our responsibility into our you know being um you know being our own leaders and 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 um really understanding that life happens because we are generating it you know we are generating it through our own um you know intuitive guidance I intentions our own, actions, our own intentions you know we are we are we're we're making it happen one by one i love that because it's like a lot of healers uh, i had conversations with again and again said we are not powerless we have the power we have the voice we are and all in astrology is a tool which help us find that empowerment i i find it very yeah. positive and very very empowering and um so thank you for sharing that one last i think question that came in was um yeah. although you have been talking about this all along yeah. you you call your i mean the the work is so based uh, astrology right so based so astrology, based yeah. astrology. Yeah, you want to tell us a little bit about that and about your programs or what you offer uh, yes, yeah thank you yes i mean the reason why i chose soul based astrology is because i believe that the soul chooses uh the physical body that it wants to come into before it gets born and i believe that you know we choose our own time of birth and we choose the location that we're born into we choose our family that we're born into and so from a soul's perspective you know the chart needs to the chart that we that we that we have from you know the time of birth and the 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 location of birth um needs to be looked at from that perspective from a soul's perspective because that's where the soul chose this particular map and this particular life potential so if we look at it from that perspective i think that we can we can get a lot more out of astrology and we can get a lot more out of living our purpose living our potential you know really understanding what we chose on a soul level you know rather than looking at only from the human perspective because the human perspective is limiting and the the human perspective you know comes with baggage yes. you know it comes with certain traumas or certain wounding or it comes with conditioning you know uh where else the soul's perspective is is neutral and it's um it's a much wider perspective and it it is it comes from the perspective of potential you know uh and empowerment yes you know, really feeling empowered yes I, i i find this very empowering exactly how you describe it because yeah. i i share many times with people um if we see our lives of course we have a body and and we need the car and we need the bank account and we need the home and everything but sure, if it's we, part of exactly it. but if we see from a soul perspective and that the soul yeah. is eternal that the soul has a, a, a intention which is so powerful to attract yes. and to and to create 
a power of creation. Yes. So and and this, this, the main the main purpose of the soul is to explore to experience. You know, it's all about experience and exploration. So it's not about right or wrong. It's not about good or bad. It's about I want to experience myself in this physicality. I want to experience myself with all the energies that I've chosen and all the obstacles that I've come in with. And I want to make the most out of that. And that's the intention of the soul. You know, and how do we do that? How do we do that in this human experience? Yes, that is really beautiful. Um, hello, everyone. Yes, we will share the um, programs and the workshops and, you know, yes. and your website. And yes. Yeah. And I will be talking a little bit more also about the Venus retrograde and the Pluto station and how Pluto goes direct uh, in, in my forecasting forum tomorrow, tomorrow evening. So if anybody wants to join us for that, you know, feel free. There's uh, I'm going to be offering for everybody who's watching today for this interview uh, a 20% discount. So you can just email me at info at astrologercoach.com and then I will send you the discount code so you can, uh, you can join us. Yes, thank you for reminding me about that. So for everyone who is watching this interview now and later, you can use, because yes. we're saving and sharing, you can use this code to receive discount for a beautiful reading, which I'm super excited also to, to receive soon. And um, if there are any questions, please post. Uh, yes, just one last, last thing. What would you like to share with everyone who is watching us? If... One last thought that I have. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> um, there's a lot of inner processing going on right now, um, I feel, because of, um, you know, all the eclipses that we had all summer long, all the retrograde phases that we've experienced all summer long. And we're now starting to, you know, get out of this inner processing. So I would advise people to just be patient with their inner process, mm -hmm. uh, be patient with, you know, letting yourself be, letting yourself process as much as possible. If you're feeling tired right now, it's okay to feel tired. You know, you, you, there's a lot going on on an energetic level, on an emotional level, on a psychological and mental level that is being processed right now. So be patient and hang in there and allow yourself to just move with uh, whatever is needs to be processed currently. We're, we're letting go of a lot of old stuff right now, right? We're really letting go of a lot of the old traumas, a lot of the old wounding. And so it's important to, to give ourselves permission to do that, you know, and to not uh, question it too much and not, not get too bogged down by, you know, the energies being intense right now. I love that, allowing ourselves to, to feel what we feel and definitely yes, reminding definitely. ourselves to have a little fun or a lot of fun, <laughs> yes. you know, every now and then, definitely. Yes. Um, thank you so much for sharing. I am looking forward to see You're you welcome. soon and talk to you soon. Thank you, everyone. We were perfect with our thank timing. You. Everything worked out. Um, thank, thank you so you. much. I'll see you soon. Thank okay. you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye, everyone. We love you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.